Hey, what's going on guys? Today I have something really, really cool that I haven't seen anywhere else on YouTube. There's a couple of videos on it that are a little old, uh, but I don't think it has as much attention as it needs. Now, I was reading up about God's number. Now, this is the number that they gave to the Rubik's Cube, which is basically the lowest number of moves that it would take to put a Rubik's Cube back into its solved state from any given scramble, which is 20. It takes just 20 moves uh, from any given scramble, or at most 20 moves, uh, as the uh, most efficient method, uh, to return any cube back into its solved state. Now, I found this to be very interesting, but of course, it does take more moves than that to return a cube back into its solved state because we use algorithms, and those algorithms have a set number of moves. Uh, so usually it would be like... Uh, well, actually, I don't know how many moves it would take on average. Uh, if someone can let me know what that is, let me know in the uh, comment section below. I'd, I'd really be interested in hearing about that. But I also found, after doing a little bit of digging, that it turns out these same people that figured out that uh, it takes 20 moves to bring a Rubik's Cube back into its solved state from any given scramble, they also found an algorithm that can be applied to the Rubik's Cube on any angle, on any um, orientation of any scramble that will have the cube pass through its solved state. Um, they, they have some t statistics. Apparently, it's not always the case. It might be like 75% of the time. Uh, but um, the cube will pass through its solved state whilst completing this algorithm. So uh, here's the algorithm here. I actually wrote it down. So I had to put a grid there so I could actually follow it because it was kind of getting jumbled up. Uh, so we have L, R2, B, L prime, R, U2, F2, L, B, D, U2, B, L prime, R2, B2, L prime, D2, U, L prime, B2, U2, R2, B, D2. Long algorithm, 25 steps long, uh, but this this algorithm, if applied to any scrambled cube uh, on any um, any axis or any orientation, it will turn the cube back into its solved state. So, let's give it a try. So I got a got a um, cube here. I'm just going to give it a scramble because I I don't have a uh, scrambler here right now. And um, I think that should be good enough. All right, so let's just give this a try and see where it ends up. Okay, so let's try the algorithm. So let's do L, R2, B, L prime, R, U2, F2, L, B, D, U2, B, L prime, R2, B2, L prime, D2, U, L prime, B2, U2, R2, B, D2. And there you have it, back into its solved state. Uh, which I think is rather interesting. I, I've been messing around with this all night, and uh, I was uh, pretty surprised to see that it actually works. Uh, that's actually a very rare case where you get right to the end of the algorithm. Usually, it will pass through its solved state at any given point uh, uh, on this al algorithm. So you could probably get like uh, 9 or 10 steps in. Uh, usually, it's around... 14, 15 that the puzzle will be solved. Just to prove that uh, this works, I'm going to do it again. So let's just do another scramble here. Uh, you can try this at home. You can try this at home right now. If you have a uh, Rubik's Cube, then uh, uh, you can give this a try yourself. If it's already scrambled, then you can keep, follow along with me and give this a try. Uh, so let's just do a load of scrambling here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So let's give this another try. So L... R2, B, L prime, R, U2, F2, L, B, D, U2, B, L prime, R2. 
and uh, it's already passed through its solved state. So you can see I've got B2, L prime, D2, U, and, and the rest of the algorithm still to go. So, so that is the nature of the algorithm. It's not like any other algorithm where it will cycle the pieces. Uh, the cube will pass through its solved state uh, along this algorithm. Now, this uh, they have some statistics with them. I haven't been able to find them. Uh, but basically, if you get to the end of the algorithm and uh, the puzzle hasn't been solved, then all you had to do is go full circle and just continue with the algorithm from L uh, all the way through. Uh, and usually by the second time, sometimes it uh, happens, uh, you'll have to go through it a third time. But basically, if you just continue following this sequence, the cube will pass through its solved state uh, whilst performing this algorithm. Okay, so the, the reason that it does this, I'm not entirely certain, but basically this algorithm has been built on statistics. Statistically, what is most likely uh, to bring two pieces together. And this is just based on all of the other algorithms that are out there floating around today, all of the um, OLL, all of the PLL, all of the F2L algorithms. They all come together and statistically, with this sequence of notations, you are more likely to get a, um, to bring just a couple of pieces together. So it will bring uh, two or four pieces together. And uh, the, the reason that it solves the puzzle is because at some point in this process, these clusters of pieces will line up into their solved state, which I think is rather interesting. Now, I don't understand the entirety of it. If you understand this more than I do, then please uh, provide a detailed explanation below because I am not, you know, set up for explaining this kind of stuff. I don't have my head kind of wrapped around it.